Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my hobby YouTube channel where I like to talk about all things fashion and makeup. And in this makeup related video, we are going to be ranking all of my blue, green, and a bit of purple eyeshadow palettes. I started ranking my eyeshadow palettes in different color families. Um, a couple of months ago, I've done rainbow, I've done uh, pastels, I've also done uh, purple palettes so far, and I thought I could kick things off again in September and sort of continue this series. And today we are going to be doing blue-green palettes. Now some of the palettes I'll be showing you are straight up blue or straight up green. Sometimes they contain a mix, and some, as I already mentioned, may have a couple of purples thrown into the mix. Now. The reason why I'm lumping these two colors together is because I feel I don't have that many dedicated just blue, just green palettes like I do with the purples. For instance, I've got quite a few like dedicated purple palettes, but in the blue-green family, I tend to go for palettes that have a mix of both. And I already did a dedicated video to the five blue-green palettes that I have, so I'll make sure to link that in the description box down below because I wanted to be able to go a little bit more in-depth in those because those tend to be my favorite. I don't tend to very easily reach for an old blue or an old green palette. I love it if they have a bit of a mix, I'm not gonna lie. So I've roped in everything that I have here, everything that I've got going on in my collection. I'm first going to chat to you about a couple of things that I can't rank yet, but that some of you may know that I own, and then we'll get to the actual ranking. So something that you may know has come out are these the little new Essence palettes, the Ice Ice Baby and Dancing Green, and I did want to put them in here, even though this one has mostly grays, so why it's a blue palette, I don't know. And then this is the Dancing Green one. I haven't tried these yet on my eyes. These are on my to try a pile for this month for sure and I will be trying them and testing them out and putting those into a 10 palette review, which will be going live before the end of the month is over, so stay tuned for that. And then some other new things that I got are some palettes from She Glam and Glam Shop. So She Glam is the makeup brand from She In, and they do this palette, the Cactus Cool. And this is a cool tone color story, but it's green. And I thought this looked really, really interesting. So that's why I thought I could pick that up and try it out. Again, haven't tried it yet. Um, this is definitely a little uh, like pushed further down the trial pile, uh, but I'll get to these uh, before the year is out for sure. My plan is to review this for you in October. Um, and then from Glam Shop, I bought their blue and their green palette. So in case you're unfamiliar with Glam Shop, they are an indie brand from Poland and they do these lovely eyeshadows apparently, so I bought a couple of their palettes. I also got a Cool Tone Neutral one, but I did also get their green palette. Seems to have a good nine pan range of different greens, so I can't wait to play around with that. And then this says blue in Polish. I did do a Google Translate to see if I was right. <laughs> and that's what this one looks like. So again, really interesting. It has an interesting formula in here, so I can't wait to try these a bit more. And for the OG viewer, you will know that I do own this big guy. This is the first Jeffree Star palette I ever bought. I didn't buy any of the older ones because at the moment that this palette released, I really didn't have that many really good blues. And I remember looking at this and going like, yep, the peaches, the neutrals with the blues, and some of these blues are a bit more green toned, or others are a bit more like true blues. It's got a really gorgeous navy and that glittery navy is really stunning too. I'm not going to be ranking this though because I don't support this brand. I keep the palettes around because I did already spend my money on them, but I don't feature these in reviews. I, I don't do anything with these palettes and in terms of content creation. So you're gonna have to just trust me on it that I like the palettes enough to keep them around. I spend my own hard-earned money on them for sure, um, but it's not something that I wanna promote on my channel, which is why I don't feature them in these rankings. But I know some of you know that I have that palette and I know that some people would then ask me questions in the, in the comments going like, Micah, where is your blue blood? It's here, it's just not going to be ranked because this brand doesn't need any more exposure than it's already had. Okay. 
Let's just move on to the ranking. So in the ranking today, I've got 18 palettes for you or palette groupings that I would like to chat about. I will not be able to show you every single palette on screen. I'll just pop up a picture for the ones that I decluttered over time because there are a few that I got rid of. I'm not gonna lie. So for me, not all of these palettes I still own anymore. So just so you know, and actually the first palette that I need to kick us off on, palette number 18 would be the Blue Moon by Colourpop. It's an old blue color story that I did try and I didn't like the mattes in this color story at all. In my palette, I think I just got a bad batch, to be quite fair. Uh, the Colourpop Blue Moon mattes were just really powdery, very difficult to build up. They just like dusted out, like dusted into nothing. There were a couple of shades that wouldn't really show up. The shimmers in there were there uh, were really nice too, but I feel that in the ColourPop Blue Moon palette, there were just a couple of undertones that didn't really go together either. So I couldn't really play with the palette the way I wanted to. I know some people really love the Blue Moon and say it's one of their favorite blue palettes, but I've got some more here and those are going to be ranked a lot more, like a lot higher than we have going on here. So the ColourPop Blue Moon, I did declutter it for a reason, which is why it gets to go into the bottom of my ranking. Palette number 17, and one that I still own, is the Sleek Calm Before the Storm palette. And the reason why this is ranked so low is because you can no longer get it, and because I don't feel it's necessarily very blue or green, because it does have some neutrals in here. However, I feel this has enough blues and greens for it to be a blue-green palette. I've left out any palettes where there is like a stray green or a stray blue uh, within the entire palette. Those didn't go get to go into this ranking. Nothing here is like a neutral with a pop of something. Everything has like full on color. And I still feel that this is enough shades to really do a full blue or turquoisey looks, but then you do get a couple of those neutrals. And that's why I feel it's not the perfect blue-green palette and this has since sadly been discontinued. It was available on the Sleek website for a very long time, even though it was listed as being limited edition, but yeah, you can no longer buy it, so I don't want to rank it too high and stress people out going like, oh, I can no longer get this. It's nice. It's got that mix of the neutrals with the blues, which I think can appeal to a lot of people, but it's not available anymore, and it's not as blue-green as I'd like it to be. Palette number 16 then, we've got the Sample Beauty Hydrographic Eyeshadow Palette. And this is a blue, green, and purple color story. It skews more blue, I feel, than it does either purple or green. And that's one of the reasons why this is on my 2 declutter pile. I actually took this palette out of my palette collection earlier this spring when I decluttered my entire eyeshadow palette collection. And I kind of kept it around so I could film this video and show it to you. One of the reasons why this palette is ranking this low and why I decided to declutter it is because I have other palettes that have these shades in where I like the formula a lot better. This is pretty, this is really lovely, but I feel that even though this is a not even an all matte palette, you get three shimmers in here. I think also from that distance that you're looking at it, you can't really tell which of these shades are the shimmers. And that's one of the things I didn't love about this palette. Yes, it's got shimmers, but they're not super vibrant, metallic-y shimmers, and everything is quite samey, samey. There isn't a lot of dimension when it comes to the way these shades combine. In terms of trying this palette and trying this brand, it was very affordable, so I like that about it. But this, it's a good formula. Again, it's not bad. It's really, really pigmented. But if you know me, then you know that I like something a little bit more buildable. Buildable is the word. And that's why this one just isn't as perfect. Another palette from the declutter pile is the Certify Affinity 2. And I did feature this in my blue-green palette video that I did in August, because this is a really good blue-green palette. It's just, when I decluttered my makeup collection, I actually went back to this to try it again, because I hadn't used it in a while. And my gripe with this palette is that it looks really pretty in the pan, and it looks really distinct, but when I put it on my fair skin, even these really deep shades just show up really, really bright. So they just there's not enough dimension, I feel, in the way these shades combine, and that's why there's just not enough 
versatility in this palette. I have other blue-green palettes that I feel do a little bit more. And another thing that I didn't love is that there's only a, a couple of shimmers in here. Um, yeah, there's five of them in an 18 pen color story, and I prefer a shimmer over a matte. Plus, the shimmers you get aren't actually like blue or green, but they are duochromes. However, now that I'm looking at this again, now that I've gone back to this again, I'm like, can I really live without this palette? I'm not entirely sure. However, I would not just use this a lot. I think I would get more use out of my other blue-green palettes, but yeah, it is a stunning palette and Certify is currently still doing a huge clear out. They're saying they're not closing down the brand, but that they're trying to like make space for new products. When those will launch and what will launch, nobody knows, but you can currently get this for like eight or nine euros, I think. So if you're still looking for a very bright, intense blue-green palette, then this is a good one. Moving on then to the number 15 spot, and that would be the Hasina 2 by Blush Tribe. This was also discontinued. Actually, Blush Tribe is was owned by the sister of the person who runs Certify, so that's a fun fact. And this is a blue-green-purple color story. So this is why I decided to rope in some of these like purpley palettes. Um, it's got a good range of purples, some good blues, but they are not super duper intense. And then you do get, get a good range of greens in here. I wish that there was, instead of a black, that this would have been like a forest green or a really intense navy, and then this palette would have been perfect. Another reason why I've ranked this quite low in, in this entire ranking is because you can no longer buy this. It's pretty, it's stunning, but this is not something I feel you should get out of your way to buy to purchase it. In fact, by now, since the brand was closed down, I am considering whether I shouldn't get rid of this because I have other blue, green, purple palettes now that I also think I prefer a little bit over this that I just feel like I don't really want to reach for this at all. Number 13 then, we are moving into this guy and this is the Makeup Revolution slash I Heart Revolution Mini Tasty Avocado. This also comes in a larger version, but I have fallen out of love with the larger I Heart Revolution Makeup Revolution palettes for sure. I just have a couple of these mini palettes that just have eight pans. This is lovely. It's got qu pretty good quality, and I really like the greens it has because it skews a little bit more grungy. It's just that, again, I think I have other green palettes that I just like a little bit better than this, and I'm not a huge fan of Makeup Revolution eyeshadow quality. It's just that I kept this around because, again, I felt I didn't have that many green palettes. But now that I have a couple more that I've bought since then that I like better, this is, again, one that I think will be on the chopping block when I do my next declutter next year. People, I'm already talking about declutters, and I'm not going to be doing one until, like, March next year. Trust me. Number 12 then, and this is another palette that I just, I can't put this in my top 10 because of all of the Huda Beauty palettes I tried, the Sapphire Obsessions is probably her worst. Uh, I really don't think that this is really good quality. If this is the only Obsessions palette you've ever tried and you've discredited the, the formula of Huda Beauty Obsessions palette based on this, I would definitely recommend trying some others because they're not all created equal. This one was not good. This yellow barely shows up. A lot of these mattes just were a little bit tough to work with. The reason why I keep this around is because of that shimmering teal in the middle. We all know I love teals and this is a very unique shimmer and that's why this palette gets to stay because if I want to reach for that shade, I have it around, but the overall quality of this just, it just wasn't that great. Number 11, and this one sadly also doesn't get to go into my top 10 because I was quite disappointed when I tried this palette, and it's the Menagerie Wheel Song palette. It's really pretty. Let's get that, let's get that out of the way. Does this have a really intense pigmented eyeshadows? For sure it has. But remember what I said about liking a buildable formula? And especially with shades like this, I think I like it even better if the formula is buildable rather than super intense. That being said, however, that's not the reason why this didn't rank in my top 12. In fact, I love Menagerie eyeshadow quality. It's just that this color story just didn't really go with my complexion very well. I feel I'm too fair to make this work. Again, this palette is coming up again in a future 10 palette review because I haven't reviewed it for you yet. And then I'll show you some looks as well. On me, some of the shades that 
sometimes don't even look that close together in the pan ended up looking very samey on my complexion. So for me, this kind of muddy together into one big giant green or blue mess, it's got a couple of really stunning shimmers, but unfortunately, it's not my favorite. So then we're kicking off the top 10 with a palette I no longer own because I've decluttered it. However, I do still own some of the shades. In fact, I think I own most of this palette still. It's just that the palette itself didn't really work for me. And I'm talking about ColourPop's Just My Luck. So I'll pop a picture up on the screen here. The reason why this palette didn't really work for me is because I felt there were, just like the Blue Moon, different undertones in the palette that I felt just didn't really go together in different looks. So for me, it felt very limiting, which is why I've taken a lot of the shades out of my Just My Look, and I've distri distributed it over two other palettes that are still coming up in this ranking. So I still own a lot of the Just My Luck shades, it's just that the palette itself as one color story didn't really work for me and that's why it gets to go into the number 10 spot. Number nine then, and here I just couldn't really choose, so it's kind of two in one go. I couldn't really pick because I also think these are really good complementary eyeshadow palettes and they're both by the same brand, they're both Huda Beauty. This is the Cocky Haze Obsessions and this is not as green as a lot of people would want it to be. However, I feel that on my fair skin, some of these really did show up more green leaning. It's really these three shades at the bottom that I feel make it skew a bit more neutral, but this I feel is the green eyeshadow palette for people who don't wanna wear greens, if that makes sense. So that's why I do love this, and this is where I do really like Huda Beauty's formula, and I think that the Emerald Obsessions can really nicely complement the cocky. So the way I see these two, as if I open up both of them, like if you have both, do you just see that if you want to make the cocky haze more green tone, that you have the emerald, that they just go together so well because the emerald has those murky greens to really make this more cocky, and if you want to make this more neutral, then the cocky haze can make that work as well. This, I, this is my favorite Obsessions palette, the emerald, like of the colorful ones that I have, the jewel-toned ones. This is lovely, it's stunning, I really liked it, I really like playing with it, and this is like, in terms of like a good curated all green palette, I do really like this, but I don't believe they still do this. In the number eight spot, I'm going to tell you about these two ColourPop palettes that I said that I distributed my Just My Luck into, because my Just My Luck shades ended up partly in the Mint To Be and partly in the Mandalorian, the child, and these again, <sighs> Would I have ranked these this high if I didn't put those other shades in? I'm not entirely sure. Let me talk about the Mint To Be first. So my gripe with the original Mint To Be was that it was just a little samey and it wasn't intense enough in terms of like the kind of shades you got to really make a very versatile look. I mean, mint green can only go so far and on my fair skin, it worked quite well, but I like to get a little bit more dimension out of my uh, eyeshadow palettes. So I've actually kept, I think, five shades from the original Mint To Be in here, and then I substituted four, maybe three or four shades from the Just My Luck in here. Uh, yeah, I believe that this is Just My Luck, this is Just My Luck, and those two are Just My Luck. Everything else is from the original Mint To Be, giving me the opportunity to do a full, like, cool tone, minty green look if I want to. Um, but then I also have something a bit grungy and deeper to deepen it up and to just get a little bit more versatility out of the palette. And then the other palette I put it into was the Mandalorian, the Child. This to me, when I got it in the original setup, it wasn't green enough. So I made this more green using these three shades from the Just My Luck. So essentially, save for like one shade, I still own the entire Just My Luck. I just distributed over other palettes. This is mainly still the same color story, but this shade was very weird and flaky. So I put the Mary Jane shade from Just My Luck in there. And I do really like the grungy greens this has. And because I already own this, I have held off of buying that Tinkerbell palette that came out that really spoke my name. But I feel like I've got similar shades going on, perhaps in this one, just a little too much. And this was really lovely quality. I really like the original setup of this as well. It's just that I felt it needed more green. And now that it's more green, it ranks higher than it would have 
with those neutrals in. Number seven then would be this guy. And I said that the Hesina 2 is kind of on the chopping block because I have other blue, green, purple palettes that I just prefer a little bit more by now. And this would be that palette. Unfortunately, this is also discontinued. I'm sort of hoping they're gonna bring this back for Halloween. How cool would that be? Uh, but this is the Beauty Bay Book of Magic. You get the blues, a little bit of teal, navy, greens, purples and then you also get a full robe of something neutral so this this is a palette that can just do so so much i was not a huge fan of the beauty bay formula when all i had tried was the pastels palette that they do that didn't really work out for me but i did i was far more impressed with the formula that's going on in here it's got some lovely really interesting shimmer shades the mattes blend really well so i'm really happy that i do have this because this is a color story that i just really enjoy and i really like the quality of these shadows as well which is why i got to go into my top 10. And then number six, and I wasn't really sure where to rank the Blueberry Muffin because it wasn't my absolute favorite palette when I tried it. Again, did I already review the, for this? I'm not sure if I already did the review for this or whether it's still coming up. In any case, this palette is one that I just felt was a little, hmm, it got a lot of hype, that's for sure. And the part about this palette that I like are the blues, which is why I feel I can rank it in the number six spot. It's got really good quality shades. It's just that what I thought was a little lackluster in this palette are the neutrals. These two pull purple on me, which I didn't expect. And everything else that you get that is a neutral is very gray leaning or just, yeah. I don't really have a transition shade in here for me, like save for this gray, that's it. It's just as a color story like together I felt it just wasn't really perfect However, the the thing that I would go to this palette again for That periwinkle shade this shimmer that shade this blue right here This shimmer over here like if I just use those five shades Yeah, I, I would keep this palette around just for that reason so that's why this get to rank very highly because it also has a really but excellent formula. So that's why this also got to be pushed up just a little bit. Now we're moving into the top five ter territory and the top five is going to be kicked off with the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop Pistachio Palette. Because I like this so much and I didn't love the Blueberry Muffin, I'm sort of still on the fence whether I should get that Bubblegum Palette from the same line because that's all blues. But then I'm like, no, Mikey, you've got that blue palette from Glam Shop as well. If you like that, you don't really need, the... you know, that's how my brain works. But yeah, I'm still sort of umming and ahhing. Should I get it? Should I not? I've got plenty of eyeshadow palettes, so I, I really don't. But this is what the pistachio looks like. Ooh, this has a very sweet scent. I hadn't held it up to my nose this closely yet. It smells like cough syrup. Hmm, weird scent. Anywho, I love the shades in this. This has lovely quality, really, really intense. I love how it goes deep enough that it really has some versatility. And this is my replacement for that mini tasty avocado. It's more green toned. It's got a much, much, much better formula. It's not as easy to like tuck into a bag, but I do not tend to really wear like very colorful shades. If I travel, I just tend to keep it neutral if I do that. So I would never really travel with, with shades like this. So for me, this is like one of my perfect, like all green palettes. And if you can still buy this, I highly recommend. But in the number four spot, I sadly have to come to you with a recommendation that is going to be hard to get, I think, because this has been discontinued. Juvia's Place the Tribe, because if there is a green tone palette, the mother of all green tone palettes for me is this one. And the reason for it being is the fact that not only do you get greens, but you also get some lovely duochromes in here that can skew any look more green toned if you so want to. Even that bronze in the middle, oh yes. Even that matte brown over here has a green undertone. The only shades I don't really reach for in this palette are the two oranges. Oranges is not my vibe, but I'm wearing quite an orange toned look today. Um, so you can go very warm toned and neutral with this if you'd like to, but for me, these three shades, that highlighter neon shade, this one, this one, and this one, that's a look. 
like those six shades and it's what I reach for all the time. It's such a sad day to see this go, which is why I actually have a recommendation for you, which I'm not entirely sure if that's still available, but if you missed out on this one and you want something that has similar quality that you can still get, and that's why it would rank in the same place as this one for me, is this guy, the Tropical Dreams from OPV. And this is that, but then with some brighter blues in. So in terms of like a blue-green palette, this may actually even be perf more perfect um, because you do get like this really nice like intense navy and this teal. So I feel like these two shades are similar to the Juvia's Place. This shade is similar to what's in the Juvia's Place. These two oranges, this guy over here, this guy over here. Like those are the shades you get in the Juvia's Place. And then you get an additional nine shades because this is 18 pans that has more like, like sandy beach kind of vibes. You get some golds in here. You get this stunning dark brown. You get some like lovely turquoisey shades and then those blues. So I feel that this, in terms of like a blue green palette, that gives you the tribe vibes in a stunning quality. That's why this had to go into a shared number four spot with the tribe. And then we're getting into top three territory. And I'm so happy to say that I wanna, I'm wanna i gonna kick off my top three with a very affordable option, the Elf, Earth, and Ocean. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will, will have seen that coming because this, if you're looking for blue greens at an affordable price point, this would be my recommendation. You have enough blues to do an old blue group you, you don't get that many actual greens because th this is already a little neutral leaning. However, you can make that lean a bit more uh, green tone if you put the greens with it. Um, so you can make this either all neutral, all green or blue. So I feel this is a very versatile palette and this silver, that teal, oh, it's really lovely. Plus if you own this, you can forego owning a bunch of those mini four pen bite size palettes because this has all the shades of like five of those <laughs> in like one palette. So for me, the Elf Earth and Ocean is a nearly perfect palette. I would have liked one or two more greens in this and it would have been perfect, but I really love the quality of this. So yeah, that's why it gets to go into my number three spot. Number two, my other favorite blue-green palette would be the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette. And this palette is just... Yes. Yes. This has every blue and every green that I could want. With a lot of other blue-green palettes, I always feel like, oh, I wish it had this. Oh, I wish it had that. But this is 15 shades, a really intense navy, a very nice bright shimmering blue. We get some teal action. We get like a nice, like really true royal blue. We get something sky blue. Then we get the olive tones. We get a forest green. We get a really nice bright intense green. And we've got a nice like green with a golden flip to tie it all together. It just, it just has everything you need. My number one spot. I'm gonna have to be very fair. The minute I tried this, I was like, ooh. If I have this, do I still wanna keep around that really bulky, he who shall not be named, blue blood palette? Because this guy, whew. Nabla Cutie, number six? Number six, Midnight. It's only six shades, but we all know how my my makeup collection is going. I love really small curated color stories. That's my vibe. And when it comes to blue tones, my favorite look to do with blues is a navy smoky eye. You knew I was going to say that. And this has everything you need for a blue tone smoky eye. You can put this in the crease. This this is the deepening shade. It's a little bit difficult to work with. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit dry. But if you build it up and you're patient and you blend it, you can really make that shade shine. You get a really intense blue shimmer. And then this is the layering shade of all layering shades because you can wear this by itself, but if you put it over that navy, wowza, it's really stunning. And then you get an interesting duo chrome here for a bit of a 
interesting action. Again, you can layer it over any of these shimmers and it will give a slightly different dimension. And then just for those moments where you don't want to go for that old blue look, you've got this bronzy shade just to tone it down a little bit. You know what I mean? So I think that in terms of like a perfect blue palette, and that's why this had to go into the number one spot. I can't change it. It's quite a recent release as well, so I'm sure you can still find this as well. And I just really fell in love with this when I tried it and I was like, yep, this needs to be number one. So there you have it. That's my ranking of all of my blue-green eyeshadow palettes. Uh, let me know in a comment down below what your top five would be. I think an entire ranking may be a bit too much, but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Would you have changed anything here? Are there palettes that I've missed? I hope not. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you today. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope you would like to stay tuned and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.